Thank you for joining us. Today, we are behind schedule. This is Doolin's top 2021 board games. It is <laughs> May of 2022. <laughs> We're excited to bring you this halfway through the year. In true Doolin fashion, I am very late. That's true, but it has given you the opportunity to play lots more games that you mm -hmm. wouldn't have otherwise. So this is probably like the most exhaustive 2021 top games list on the entirety of YouTube. Mm -hmm. And you can take that to the bank. <laughs> Are you ready? I am ready. Am I gonna try and guess again? Is this, See, was that our intro? Yeah, that was our okay, intro. Cool, We're cool, rolling cool. with it. I've, we've done this before. Yeah. But the phone ran out of space. <laughs> and so we recorded <laughs> we this for like, like an a hour month and ago. 20 maybe, minutes. Maybe two months ago? It was at least two months ago. It was February. It was February. And now I don't know what we've not wanted to anymore. do it again because we it spent was like an a hour long and a half video. And we were like, it was a good video too. Was like, was I, we got video. done and I was like, man, we told jokes. But guess what? This one's gonna be better. Mm, I hope so. <laughs> this one's gonna be better. We'll see. Okay, number I'm 10. Trash. Number 10. Number There's 10. A lot what, do you, what do you think? I don't freaking know, dude. What do you There's think? There's so many games on these shelves. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go with, I want, I want, eh, it's fine. Cubitos. Cubitos, yeah. okay. I, I, I did, don't want to go out of order here. We're am starting with to, 10. Am right? I allowed to like say some honorable mentions? Oh, at okay, all? that's fine. Do those is first. That, is that fair? Give some honorable mentions. Is that mentions. fair? Because it's Cubitos so, in those? No. Oh, is it in your top 10? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are three games I did want to shout out. Uh, they aren't like 11, 12, 13. They're very close. They were in 11 through like, I think 20. Okay. But these were very unique games that I did want to shout out that I felt like deserved like the shout out, okay. like, it, but they they weren't in my top ten. I'm sorry. Uh, the first one is uh, Die of the Dead, which oh, is a game. Yeah, I think yeah. it was like number thirteen. This game uh, really deserved a shout out in my mind because not only was it like kind of an indie publisher, like mm -hmm. I don't think they were very big. Mm -hmm. Die of the Dead is cool because it has this unique mechanic where, uh, I mean, obviously it's a race, but yes. you use these like caskets that you it. hide your dice in. I know, but we're explaining, you know. Caskets that you hide the dice in, and then to uh, manipulate them, mm -hmm. they get shaken in the casket mm -hmm. and then revealed, and then you do something with that. Shaken, not stirred. Shaken, not stirred. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've I just thought that was that really, really cool, uh, the way that that was done. The, the I mean, everything about the game was really, really well made. Beautiful uh, production. But I just thought that deserved a little bit of yeah, a shot. Yeah, I really enjoyed shaking the caskets. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Was fun. And you didn't play that until 2022. Second one I wanted to shout out okay. uh, is Picture Perfect. No. It's not my top 10. That's what, when you said they're unique, I was like, Picture Perfect, no, that's in his top 10. No yeah. chance it's, it's not, not in his top it 10. It was, believe it or not, it was number 11. Uh, and this game is extremely unique. I think that it it's really well made. I have the five to six player expansion so that I can play with my parents uh, and it's a, how do you describe this game? It's like a, it's like a deduction game in which you're also, you have a little bit of like, kind of like similar to Awkward Guests mm -hmm. where you have a little bit of control over what other people see. Yeah. It's like, I can choose to give you this card, yeah, not yeah. this card. You have a little bit of that kind of control, but in general, it's kind of a memory deduction game. Mm -hmm. um, and it really hits on those two notes very well. I've enjoyed, uh, not Awkward Guests, I, I mean, I have, but yeah, yeah. I've enjoyed Picture Perfect. Uh, Picture Perfect on like every single play. I think I've played it three times now. Mm -hmm. I freaking loved it. It was a game that rang in 2021. We mm -hmm. played it at midnight. Yeah, we did. January 1st. Uh, great game, really love that game. I'm shocked it's not your Twitch. It's it's game. crazy how unique it is. I don't mm -hmm. think about, I can. It's really hard to compare it to things. Yeah. I think uh, it fits into that sort of like lightweight, but just enough weight for like adults or like heavier yeah. gamers to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, great game. And then the last one, this one's less because it's unique and more because I just think that because of how vastly different. Uh, and no, it's not vast. Vastly different the original to this. Like it, it's like most improved of 2021. I'm, that's my award I'm giving this one, and it's Chronicles of Crime 1900. Ooh, okay. Uh, I got rid of just now uh, the base Chronicles of Crime because I I have so many problems with the uh, the, QR the cards. cards codes are just so like they take you out of it. The problem yeah. with like trying to zoom in, get like get it in focus is just really really bad. Whatever they you out changed of the on the game cards from Chronicles of Crime to the Millennium series, like y'all never go back. Yeah. It's a night and day difference. And I've, I I was wondering like different lighting, like no, does that change anything? Maybe no. Same game, different. No. I mean same. Same setting, pull out one card from the new game, one card from the old. You can do the new one from like this angle. It's mm -hmm. like, got it. You can be like right here. And it's like, scanning. 
<laughs> scanning. It'll take forever. You change it up a little bit more and it finally mm -hmm. goes through. Yeah, it's just, it, it took you out of it. Beyond that, I mean like the themes, I think are even cooler. Agreed. Like the other, the base one was just like, you're a detective. Yeah. Whereas this one, like the 1900 specifically, mm -hmm. you are a newspaper writer mm -hmm. in uh, the 1900 France. Yeah. It's like, it's like really cool. Same with 1400, same with mm. 2400. They're just like more unique and exciting environments mm -hmm. other than like same old, same old. So you know? Lucky Duck, most improved award goes to you for 2021. Now we're into top 10. You said QB. I said QB, but you said it was wrong. So I'm taking a second guess. Okay, yeah, you go ahead. I'll let you do that. <clears throat> I don't think you'll guess it. Oh, there's a lot. You got a lot of games. You got a lot of good games. Um, there are two options that I have in my head. I'm gonna say it's either buried treasure or mind management. Do you wanna like solidify one of those? No. Do I have to? It, it is one of those. Oh, it is? Yeah. Which one do you think? Oh, God, now that's a lot of pressure. You just wanna st stick to that I and like think, take the win? I think buried treasure is gonna be higher than 10 for you. So I'm gonna say mind management. You are exactly right. Heck yeah, dude. Well done. All right, Let's so go. I mean, this I'm was sad that yeah, it's only number say, ten. Isn't this your number one, right? It was my number one. It was your number one, yeah. and I I like this game a lot. I think that unfortunately for me, um, in my mind, I don't think I've played it enough for mm -hmm. it to warrant That's fair. much higher. That's fair. Uh, most of the games that I've played. Uh, beyond, like that are nine through one. I've played a bunch and I can definitely say without a doubt, I love these games. And this game is is great, but I've only played it, I think twice, twice and in one sitting. So yeah. it wasn't even like multiple sessions. It right. was all, I think maybe three times. I think we played and it And I've played times. it like five or six times, which yeah. still isn't a significant mm -hmm. amount. And I want to bring it back to the table more and more, but uh, yeah, I mean, I still, Love it, love it so much. So just to go into this a little bit, if you've not watched his video, you should. Uh, but or our gameplay. Or our, or our gameplay, you should go watch that too. Uh, this is a deduction game for one person or multiple people. And one person is sort of this mouse that's running around the board trying to stay hidden uh, and not get caught. Mm -hmm. And the way that works is sort of, I don't really know what you do because I never played as the mouse. I only played as the oh, person you looking. you never played as I never played mouse. as a mouse. Uh, I, I was looking for you, but I, I would use like symbols that mm -hmm. I knew you had visited to deduct where you had moved right. and also where you are now. Cause you know I want more of those symbols mm -hmm. and you know that I'm limited. I can only move orthogonally unless mm -hmm. I move through, like there's a couple symbols that allow yeah. you to move diagonally as well. And you can well. never go back over spaces. You can never revisit so, a space. Like I knew that if I eliminated this section, like there wasn't, like I don't know, he might've built himself into a corner. Yep. Uh, but yeah, there was a lot of really cool uh, pieces of this game that I, I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. What kind of sets it apart from other games that are like that, I think is the art and also the leveling up system. The shift system. The shift system, yeah. where Love every that. single level, if you're playing with the same people, uh, whoever loses will open a new box, giving them sort of this boost in their power. Yeah, it kind and of it's really cool. self balances. Mm -hmm. And it's also just like opening up expansions and mm -hmm. little gifts for losing and what can Everybody be Everybody loves opening presents. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so that was number hey. 10. Uh, Off to a let, I'm gonna start. let you finish the remainder of the video by yourself. I'm one for one. You just oh, <laughs> uh, I don't think I should continue at this point in time. I All think right. I'm good to go. Number nine. Okay, number nine. Oh, okay, Cube. I mean, can I do can I do two picks and you tell me if I'm one of them? Sure. Again? Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna go with Cubitos. Okay. And I'm gonna go with Savannah Park. Okay. You were not right. Okay. Not can correct. I add two more? <laughs> go ahead. Rat catcher, or. Uh, you haven't played that time you killed me mm -hmm. yet. Oh, uh, Rat Catcher or H.H. H. Holmes Murder Castle? Oh, I also forgot to shout out, an, well, no, this is a 2022 game. That's we'll, 2022 we'll, game. We'll, we'll talk about that next year. We'll show you what it we'll is. We'll see you next May. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is one of those two. What did I even say? <laughs> I literally oh, forgot. Rat Catcher and Savannah Park. You know, you said Rat Catcher and H.H. H. Holmes. Oh, okay, good. If if Picture Perfect wasn't in your top 10, there's no chance H.H. H. Holmes is in your top 10. As much as I, I think it was in your top 10 when we recorded it last time. H.H. H. Holmes? Yeah. Oh, well then it's definitely, it's gotta be Ratcatcher then. <laughs> it is Ratcatcher. Oh, I'm two for two. Kind of. Kind of, kind that's of. fair. No, uh, I'm, I'm counting. This is a solo game. Okay. Uh, the first uh, on my top 10, uh, and there might be more, we'll see. Uh, yeah, uh, there will be more, at this, least one, if not two. This game, is incredible. And I think value wise, this might be one of the best values of yeah. 2021 that you can find. 
Uh, this game is incredibly thematic, incredibly beautiful. Like mm -hmm. the art is just, it blows me away every single time. Components even. Uh, yeah, it, and to speak on the game just a tiny bit, cause I don't wanna, I don't wanna blow it up like, give, and, and talk give way too a little, long. A little slice of cheese. A little slice of cheese. <laughs> uh, this it. game, you are playing a rat catcher yeah. where, where you're one of, I think, six or seven different rat catchers that you can pick. Which is also uh, incredibly cool. Yeah. It's like a varied amount of content. And they all have like these, the inlay boards or yeah. whatever, which are all really, really pretty. Uh, all unique, th uh, anyway, uh, getting back onto that, they're all very asymmetric where they play extremely different, which mm -hmm. is really cool. So each time you play, is gonna be a little bit unique. You have traps, you have po uh, grenades essentially, potions, uh, and also uh, unique abilities that you can use in order to fight rats. And then also um, kind of, protect yourself because the rats will get a chance to swarm you mm -hmm. and their their main goal is to go after the cheese that'll be around the board. Uh, this is how they level up and that is also how you level up. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of a race to 10. Uh, first person to get, ten, or first group to get 10 cheese wins the game. Uh, as the rats get more cheese, they the rats will be able to move or bite you harder or whatever it is. Aren't there like um, nemesis rats too or something Nemesis like rats okay. will spawn along the way, which are sort of like mini bosses, which yeah. they're actually, like I've played this a few times. The times that I've died the most are because nemesis rats have joined the game at just the wrong time for mm. me. Uh, but There's then, sparkly magic cheese in this game? Yeah. I didn't even know. And it's really, really, like they all look like that. Yeah, and they're really, incredible. really cool. Uh, really well produced. But these um, these cheese tokens will also pro uh, spawn the rat boss, which is, I think there's actually seven, same number uh, okay. as humans, sure. uh, bosses that you can fight. Uh, and so I just, find this game incredibly fun. And then the fact that it's extremely asymmetric, ex extremely mm -hmm. well produced. Like even if you open that up right now, like the way it's built is like a $200 game. Sure. Like the way it's put even together. Even the insert and everything. And I think you can find this game for how much? Like I bought it $30? for $33, I yeah, think. Yeah, like. it's very cheap. Yeah. And you don't have to buy expansions. Like all of that stuff comes in the base box. And I just love the, the love that was poured into this game. That's and awesome. I'm really impressed by it. So uh, the Rat Catcher, my number nine Excellent. of this year. Okay, well, uh, my number eight. I'm running out now. It's gotta be, I'm not gonna get it. Cubito Savannah Park. Cubito Savannah Park? No. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give up. I, there's no way I get it. There's no way I get three in a row, right? Is Calico 2020? No, it's not. Project L, doubt it. Crash Octopus, doubt it. Uh, ooh, but Horrified American Monsters is technically a 2021 game. I'm gonna go Horrified American Monsters or Buried Treasure. It is not either of those okay, two. Okay, give up. Uh, it is not even on my shelf. Oh, and it's well, not even not on your fair. shelf. What? Uh, this is Ankh. Oh. Did you forget that it was a 2021 game? <laughs> no, I just didn't expect it to be in your top 10. Oh yeah. No, I enjoyed it a lot. That's awesome. Uh, I, I love that game. Now, when I do rank it like this, I do have to say I am not a fan of the merge. I think that two player with the Pharaoh expansion is one of the best experiences I've had in a I game. Mean, I do agree with that. Uh, one of our best experiences playing together. Literally. Like it was so incredible. It was incredible. Yeah. Uh, and that, that was recorded, right? Like, yeah. Or did we only play nope, that? Nope, there's gameplay. There was a gameplay of it. I didn't game. do that to like shout us out or anything. Like we, you're already watching. You could have pretended you did. That was a good segment. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, this game is a, um, it's not really asymmetric. It kind of is, but like, they're yeah, not you're, that different. Your gods have various, like they have one single power that's mm -hmm. different, but other than that, you have the same shared upgrade board, mm -hmm. but how you choose to upgrade your character can yeah. be vastly different from how another person chooses to upgrade their character, yeah. but you all have the same options. Mm -hmm. And at its core, it's just an area control game mm -hmm. where uh, it's is it, it's first to a certain amount of points. So yep. You have to race, essentially. Basically up the track, yeah. Uh, and then every time you are making decisions, the, uh, what is it called? The track that you're moving pieces on, uh, mm -hmm. before it gets to the last the edge. Action, Celeste. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, whenever you make an action, if you make uh, the last action in a particular row mm -hmm. on the action selection system, you move another piece, which will trigger certain events to mm -hmm. happen. Mm -hmm. And you might want those events, and sometimes you might want to avoid them so mm -hmm. that you can get both of your actions, but there's this push and pull of, okay, I kind of want that, but I know that he's going to want that. Yeah. If I take that now, he's going to get that cool event, and. Maybe I can do something else so that he takes that in this turn and then I could take the event next turn. You like, can like give up your second action to get the event if you really yeah. want it and stuff like that, yeah. All right, uh, number seven 
It might be a game you've mentioned already. I, you, to I'm be fair, thinking you name like or Savannah Park. It's gotta be up there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay, go ahead. I don't need to keep doing it. It is buried okay, treasure, yeah. which is right I don't, here. I don't think Savannah Park's in your top ten. Let's see. Not if it's. It wouldn't be ahead of these. I don't think. Let's see. Anyways, buried treasure by Restoration Games, not a sponsor. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Eagle Griffin, great game. Uh, where uh, it's what are you, a, are you it's ready to complain simple, about the box size? First thing, yes, the box size is horrible. It would probably be like number two or number. I'm just kidding. Uh, it didn't take away from its points at all. I think this is a solid, solid card game that is lightweight is. Uh, in nature. But every single time I've played it, regardless of if you're a major fan of board games or very new, it leaves you angry but laughing mm -hmm. and having a great time. Yeah, it's a really nice contrast of like easy to play and very mean. Mm. So like when you get hurt, it's just like, well, I run that back. That mm -hmm. only took 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Like I'm ready for another one. Oh, I do it, really enjoy this game. Played it at two and four. Mm -hmm. I've never played it at three. I don't even know if you can. I guess you can. You can. Okay. You can. I've only played it two. Uh, two, I think is interesting. Emily and I have probably played the, this the most at two. Uh, and I do like it. It's like a whole separate like way you play. Uh, it's but what's, all hate drafting yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's interesting to me about more than that is that it adds sort of a diplomatic feel mm -hmm. where uh, we all are trying to talk each other into hurting other the, people. Other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I could take this right now, which would hurt Emily. Mm -hmm. But if I take this, then it's Doolin's responsibility to take that mm -hmm. or she gets it. And it's, so I'm just going to put the onus on him. Mm -hmm. He has to handle it now. And what's interesting is I played this with my family and they're very quickly turned into uh, times where they would see a more card and they knew that it would hurt me or it would hurt Tucker, who's also incredibly good at games, is my, my sister's husband. Uh, and who's we would, also incredibly good at games. A humble yeah, brag match. Yeah, in our group, How's he Brandon wins Camp more, going? like probably 70% of the time. I'm just saying, because you said also. Yeah, I mean, I'm good at games. Incredibly good, apparently. Continue with your story. <laughs> Sorry. Either that. way, uh, it'll they'll be like, three cards away from a uh, more, or not a more, a grabby paw, which allows you to steal cards from other people, three. And we'll see it, and uh, the person next, who would be his wife, uh, would be like, all right, if I take this card, you take that card, you take that card, then Josh can take the grabby paws and steal them all from Tucker. Nice. And it, then all four people team up on yeah. the one person. It's just, oh, it's so cool. Seems like games of root that I've been playing lately. Yeah, no, it's, it's a great game. Uh, and if you haven't tried it yet, it's I think it's pretty dang cheap to get yeah. into. It's a card bucks, game. Like and that. and if you have a solid group between two and five, I think it would be good at pretty much any player account. And it can fit in a deck box. It can, so. and you should, because man, is this box big compared to But they to what couldn't it, put, like, it's so cute though, the art is so It does cute. look like a pie tin. I, I, Emily points that out to me all the time. It does kind of look like what you fit a little cute. pie in, but I still think it should be a tiny game. All right, I'm just gonna keep guessing Cubitos because I think it's coming <laughs> at one point. We'll see, maybe it is. Cubitos. Uh, number six. Cubitos. It's not Cubitos. <laughs> it is uh, Final Girl. What? Yeah. Number six? Yeah. This game's incredible. No, no, no. Oh, you think it I thought be it would be your number two. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> what? I, I had had a fantastic time playing this, but unfortunately, I only have the base box in one of the expansions. That's uh, fair. Which allows me to play the base game as many times as I want. I think that if I could have the variety, I would rank this higher. But that being said, it had tough competition. It's number six in my top 2021 uh, games of all time. I Games of all 2021. <laughs> 2021 games of all time. That's no, right. Uh, 2021 games. And I, I think this is a game that is only gonna get better at back season two. I'm really looking forward to that. In case you have no idea what I'm talking about, this is a one player game where it's, um, it's a lot like Rat Catcher in the sense that you have a boss and you are leveling up along with the boss as the game goes on. Uh, and by the end, you are fighting each other until one person dies. And this game is super fun. You can actually watch Max play this game. I taught him how to play and then controlled sort of the AI for him and just watched him suffer. And it was a really, really fun game. It was, uh, it was epic. Yeah, and it had a great ending. Uh, I'm just flabbergasted. Yeah, what did, I, where did you think this would be? I think that you will understand. I thought top three. I, I thought top three. I think I understand. know what your number one is. Do you? 
unless it's changed, I know what your number one I is. I think that you think my next five are banger games, other than one that you've not, not played. Uh, two of you haven't played, but you know how much I love it. Number five, what do you want to guess? Cubitos. It is Cubitos. <laughs> do, you agree, it. do you agree that Cubitos is better than Final Girl? Probably. Yeah. And with that yeah. being said, I've only played Final Girl once. Do you want to pull it? It's right there in my racing section. There it is. Even though it's a very weird racing game, it's still a racing game. Got it. Well done. This is a game that has SpongeBob on the cover. Um, May as well. <laughs> but this is a racing dice trap, not dice trap. Dice building. Dice building game where you're- Except for it's not like, there are certain games where you literally build a dice by like adding <laughs> different faces. Dice pool building. You're selecting dice to get into your dice pool. Weirdly enough, it reminds me of how games like, um, like, like Clank, or mm -hmm. uh, yeah. like any of those type of like purchasing games yeah. where you're going 100%. and you're, you'll, you'll, okay, do I buy things that will help me get more power? Do I buy things that will help me go, get more purchasing later? Like it's just an interesting push and pull like that. But then when it's your turn, you'll be rolling all mm -hmm. of your dice until you either stop and take what all of them have or you bust, which means that none of them have any of the faces that you're looking for or actually any face shown yeah. at all. It's all blanks. And then you get nothing. Other than to move up on a little track that kind of helps you, but at yeah. the same time, mainly you get nothing. Mainly, yeah. Uh, and if it's, you've played Quacks of Quedlinburg, mm, it's going yeah. to be compared hardcore to Quacks of Quedlinburg. The main difference here is that you're rolling dice rather than picking chits out mm -hmm. of a bag. Which I guess that Quacks of Quedlinburg is a race to go around the track, but at the same time, this one actually has a track board yeah, that the, you're moving on. The race in Quacks is just the race to get the most points. Mm -hmm. A lot of games have a race if you would quantify yeah. that as a race. Yeah. But yeah, this is literally first person to pass the finish line or if multiple pass in the same turn, the person gets, gets the farthest. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love that it's actually a race because to me, when you're going for points, I find there are a little bit more obvious mm. strategies not, not that you can't change up your strategy because you've seen that with you when you went heavy on the mushrooms and the pumpkins yeah. and no one else even touched them mm -hmm. and you won. But like, I find that the strategies are a little more uh, diverse in Cubitos mm. in the sense that like some person may want to purposefully fail early on to try yeah. and get yeah. like to roll more dice and other people may want stuff that allows them to buy a lot of stuff and other people may just go heavy in cats, which we've both done and is very strong if you just roll a bunch of cats that <laughs> well, cause you to rush down the track. That's the thing too, is that in this game, like every single game is different with all of those yeah. cards. So cats can be really powerful in one game and another sure. it might not be. Yeah. It's just, it's unique that way. Absolutely. Like 100%. Yeah. Does Great Quacks game. have that? Where like you can yeah. change up? Okay, so yeah, yeah very comparable. Quacks, Wonderlands, War, Cubitos, they all have those things where certain cards are just gonna be, you wanna play with this set of cards mm -hmm. and the next time you play with this set of cards mm -hmm. and the, the chits are the same, but they do vastly different things. Yeah, so really cool. Really great game. That's my number five. At this point in time, man, I don't freaking know. You I feel like you can start guessing. I'm not gonna, so Horrified, I'm still thinking might be on there. Savannah Park is not, that's not on there. Mm -hmm. No, No question in my mind. Uh, I'm really struggling because I know you haven't played like Familiar Tales, which I think might be on there. It should. I know. It, that's a 2022 game. Okay. I think I know your top two. So it's really that four and three position mm -hmm. where I am not quite sure. Uh, what did I just say? You I played this game. With, I'm going to go with Horrified American Monsters. It is not. Okay. It is. Behind your head, it's a doodle dash. Oh, wow. I think this game deserves this spot. Okay. I have fallen in love with this game. I have said for a while now that the game that Max just had in his hand is my favorite party game, and I think it still is. Okay. This, however, I think rightfully deserves the number two spot. Okay. Uh, it is Pictionary, kind of, but like mainly think just one. So the rules where one person says a number on a card and shows it to everybody. You're not all working together though. You're very, it's very much a competitive mm -hmm. game. Yeah. And as soon as the person says go, everybody will start drawing that thing as fast as they can. The first person to finish, like get done, takes this weird piece. It's just like looks, a stick. It's just a stick. It's a cylinder. It's a gold cylinder. Wooden thing uh, that's in there and you grab it and then the next person to finish grabs this dice that has one side on it that is a stop. As soon as that is rolled, they all stop and everybody else has to stop drawing. 
Uh, then in that order, starting with the person who grabbed the golden stick first, they show their picture to the person. They get no clues whatsoever. Mm -hmm. They have to guess what the word was off of just that picture. Yeah. What it, and then if they don't get that, it goes to the next person. Then if they don't get that, it goes to everyone else at the table and then points are awarded accordingly. If you, the first and if you person, get it right, it's only one point, no matter, yeah. no matter what spot you are. So yeah. it's a nice like tension of, it, I love it in two ways because it's a nice tension of how fast can I draw and also how can I make this clear what it is. Yeah. And then I also really like the strategy behind like actually thinking about what the card or what the word is. Mm. Because if I get a word that's tough, I may purposefully like, I don't care about going first. For sure. Because I don't think that the person who gets it first is going to get it correct. And if they do, deservedly so. Mm -hmm. And then I don't even think the second person. But then once the guesser has seen the first and the second clue combined with everyone else's clue, mm -hmm. then I think they'll get it. So I really like that like, there's like that multi-layered strategy of how no, you approach I, it. No, I love that. Exactly for what you're talking about. And then on top of that, a lot of games, the problem with like drawing games is that some people will be really good and some people will really yeah. be really bad. This kind of levels the playing field yeah, because no one is going to draw incredibly well unless you're the loser. Like yeah. you are always going to lose if you spend way too much time on your drawings. And even and, in games like tattoo stories, like mm -hmm. you can have you can have a good drawing in a minute. Mm -hmm. This is not that. No, this is like. You're you're really racing. Like you're not on a timer. You're racing against other people who also want to be the first to grab it. So mm -hmm. there's no like, I have a minute to draw this. I can do this and I can do that. Yeah. And it comes out looking pretty. You don't know how other people are gonna play. I've drawn like a stick figure with a stick in his hand mm -hmm. and tried to get someone to guess like fishing or something mm -hmm. and it didn't work. And the mm -hmm. next person just added a freaking lure in a pond and it worked out great. Mm -hmm. and it's just I was just trying to be first. Yeah. But. And I love that too because like there's there's a lot of table talk at the end of the yeah. round, making fun of everybody's yeah, drawings. 100%. And oh, it's so it's so good. It's very, very fun. Uh, Chili Fox is nailing it out of the park in terms of like yeah. uh, games that I've tried by them and how much I've loved them. So yeah, that is my number four. Horrified American Monsters. It is not. What, is it in your top 10? Okay, hold on. Because I thought I knew your top three. Or top, yeah, I thought I knew your top three once that was picked. Wow. I don't want to guess them because I don't want to give away what I believe your top three to be. So go ahead and tell me what it is. My number three is going to surprise Max because I think I had it at least one spot higher last time. It is the initiative. Yep, that's what I thought your number two was. <laughs> Dang it. The initiative. This game is one of the best experiences I've had playing games with my wife. Uh, was a perfect couples game, I think, uh, in terms of not only the simplicity of the play and how quickly you can get it done, but also in terms of the, the strategy and cohesion as a team we had. Uh, this game is cool, uh, but it has a game within a game, so That should speak. be like the tagline, just table knots. This game is dot, 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 cool. <laughs> Question mark. Question mark, yeah. Uh, it, the, what I mean by that is that the base game itself is sort of, meant to represent not the real game. Yeah, it's stripped down. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a comic book that sort of explains this where these kids find this board game at a uh, at a garage sale and it ends up kind of like Jumanji style, pulling them into this like Jumanji? big Jumanji. Okay, there you go. Is that, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, I thought you said Jumanji. I did say Jumanji. It's Jumanji. Is it Jumanji? <laughs> yeah. Okay, Jumanji style uh, where they are pulled into this like big uh, conspiracy. And so the base game you'll get to read the comic and then when they play the game, you play the game. Right. Uh, and it'll add new things as they can complete certain quests and different stuff like that. But in between them, you'll find hidden secrets uh, in the pages. You'll find uh, uh, codes in the cards that you're getting that mm -hmm. will point you to certain other cards and you'll be able to go look at them. And Emily probably has at least 10 pages of just written code, code written them. and yeah. ciphering them. And we've had the most fun between the rounds just trying to figure out what these codes mean. There's also hidden uh, like really big uh, reveals in this game that I definitely don't wanna like spoil for Max or for yeah, any of you guys. Uh, I think this is definitely worth anybody's time who is willing to 
because the base game can feel a little repetitive and it can get, it's a little easy. I, I will say that. Yeah. Uh, but the in-between stuff, if you are into code breaking, if you are willing to put the time in with at least one other person, I think two players, this is perfect. Uh, if you're willing to put the time in, this is definitely worth your time. It's not that expensive. It's the very first game by this group called Unexpected Games. And Corey I, Kaminska. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he left and started his own yeah, company. Designer so. of some very famous popular games. Yeah. So he's, he's got a repertoire for sure. And this yeah. is kind of like his own, his own thing, doing mm. something unexpected. Mm. Is that good? He had a good initiative. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway, that's my number three. Uh, I think this was actually Inley's number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is very deserving. I, I think this is incredible. I definitely thought that was your number two. Mm -hmm. Now, if Horrified American Monsters is not your number two, then I don't think I know it. So, I think you will beat yourself up for forgetting because I, I think you knew my top three pretty well. But because <sighs> I've played this show? game, it is not yet. It's not on your shelf yet. And you you own it. And I, I, forgot own to it. I forgot to tell you to bring it. Yeah, well, that's probably why I took it off my list because you didn't tell me to bring it. Would you? Do you oh, that's. That? I didn't even think about the fact that I knew mind management was on your list because I brought it, but I didn't even think about that. <laughs> uh, my number two game of 2021 is Cascadia. Oh yeah, this I game... should have. <laughs> that. That's this, fair. This is a game uh, from the creators of Calico. Mm -hmm. It's an AEG game, so they make a lot of games, but it's specifically... It's the AEG flat out. It's the same, it's in that trilogy of Calico, uh, 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 Cascadia, Cascadia, and Flourish? I'm, I've never heard of I'm Flourish. forgetting the third one. It might be Flourish, it might not be. When is don't... that? Is that coming out now? Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, something. You look it up. Both those games are banger games. For me, it's so. a, there's a trilogy. There's a okay. third one. Well, either way, it might not be Flourish. Though. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> we'll look it up later. Uh, Cascadia is a uh, man. It's a drafting game where you're sort of building out these um, these pieces of a. Is it a rainforest? It's like a forest. It's just. It's where there's mountains. Okay, there's mountain. ice. Yeah. It's just. It's like a state park. Your own state park. Sure. Think that. Uh, because all of the animals that you're also be drafting along with them yeah. are representative of like American state park yeah, animals. Yeah, yeah. There's bears, there's uh, eagles, there's foxes. foxes, there's- Moose. Is there moose? There are moose. Oh, cool, moose, I forgot. You played Cascadia before? I have play, played Cascadia before. I thought we were like, uh, I thought they were deer. Nope, they're huh. big old moose. Hmm. Maybe it's a Canadian game. Maybe it's Canadian. Yeah, it's like if I had to give it like three things, I would say pattern building, drafting, and tile placement. Yeah. Is the three that I would assign to Cascadia. And there's, I think one of my favorite parts about this is in the same realm of Calico where you can kind of just pick like you're not gonna be able to do everything no, well. You're not. Uh, you can pick what you want to go for and stick to that. Yeah. Uh, if this is if if Calico was a game that just overwhelmed you with, I'm going to mess up some things and not boost and get everything, mm -hmm. then this is gonna bother you too, uh, because there are not only animal patterns you can go for, but there are also. Uh, like special mountain like pieces mm -hmm. need to be put together and you have to take both of them whenever you draft them because they'll be side Unless by you side. Spend a pine cone. Uh, and it's just it's oh man, it's it's annoying at, and at the same time I love it and I all whenever I finish I always want to go back and yeah. play more. I don't disagree with anything you said, but I do believe that Cascadia is a little more relaxed mm. and uh, at least it gives you the freedom to be mm -hmm. a little more relaxed. You don't have to play it more relaxed. Mm -hmm. You can be just as <laughs> as nervous and tense as you are when you're playing Calico trying to fit everything in. Yeah. But because Cascadia is a little more open-ended and you're building your own thing, you don't have to fall into like the restrictions Absolutely. that they There's give no you. There's no inlay board or anything yeah, like that. It's a little more free flowing. And so, although I do agree that it's still tense and you're never gonna do everything you wanna do and it's kind of frustrating puzzle that's also satisfying mm -hmm. and extremely enjoyable at the same time, it is like a little less on the frustrating side to me, the way mm -hmm. I've played Cascadia at least. But. So this is my number two, and I, I definitely think it's worthy of the praise that it's getting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's consistently been in the top 10 on like the uh, hotness for mm -hmm. a while. And then on top of that, I think it's reached like the 80s in terms of top Probably, 100 of all yeah. time. It's incredible it's very how, good. how fast it's gone up. Yeah. Uh, but I love this game. I know it was on your list. I can't remember what spot, but it, it was somewhere. Either. It was somewhere pretty yeah. high. You'll have to check out my list. Yeah, go back and watch it. It was Maxis. like six months ago. Yeah, back in 2021 <laughs> when he, we probably should have done this one. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> I think it was actually in January. But regardless, I know what your number one is. 
I think most of the audience probably does too. Do you Unless think? you're new to table knots. Yes, of course I do. Get out of here. It's way up there. Yeah, I know it's way up there. <laughs> it's set a watch, swords of the coin, or set a watch. Yeah. Both. Really. Am I not sneaky? No, no you're not that sneaky. Much? I've known, of course that was your number <laughs> one. So this game. Uh, oh, they mic's all messed up. I gotta fix it. Sorry. <laughs> Wait, wait for a second. Pause. I did not wear the proper shirt for a clip-on mic <laughs> because if I am not sitting on the shirt, that's it's why, just like that's why super I droopy. These cool like uh, uh, magnets. Well, it's just that it's so heavy yeah. that it pulls down this lightweight yeah. Lord of the Board shirt. Sam should have bought the sweater. <laughs> <laughs> then you'd be like really, really hot in here. I'm already really, really hot. <laughs> I could turn on that again, either way. No, 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 I was like sexy. Oh, yeah, you're right. You didn't even come to that conclusion. Do you mm -hmm. know how bad that makes me feel? <laughs> My self-esteem is shot. All right, um. Why are you talking while drinking? I'm just messing with you. All right, let's go on. Let's talk about, this <laughs> you ever do that? This is Swords of, the, Swords of the Coin. This game is a sequel, again, to the 2019, I think, uh, 2018 set of watch game that was meant for one to four players, but mm -hmm. I think is best of solo, where you are essentially playing a mini D&D campaign. Mm -hmm. There's no like really role play, uh, but it's all of the fun of like the dice rolls, all of the uh, abilities and powers that all of the people are gonna have. You'll be able to upgrade along the way, like all of that kind of stuff is gonna be in the base box, along with a million different monsters that you can fight and a ton of strategy, like a whole bunch. I, I forget how many there I'm are. And then a whole lot. bunch of bosses as well, which will kill you really fast. And to talk about that, the difficulty of this game is crazy. Like I, I lose this game way more than I win it. Uh, but to talk about specifically Swords of the Coin, they took the base game, which was already good, this really fun like dice manipulation, dice management game, uh, and, and multiplied the strategy, like the difficulty even, by, which they didn't need to do. Uh, and then added a whole bunch, okay. new cast of characters that, that all can like be used with the other game. And then a whole new cast of villains and monsters. And then they added this extra system that completely made me love this way more than the original. I never play without it is the merchant system. Mm -hmm. Which is funny because they actually took that and used it as a theme for a whole other game which almost say, made I, my top I 10. I thought that might be in your top uh, 10. It, it's called Merchants of Magic, which is another game by Rock Manor uh, Games. But uh, this specifically adds a, uh, a merchant that you can visit after every single watch phase, mm -hmm. which you go through six by the end of the game. Uh, and in between, you can spend coins that you you find using the uh, the watch with the person whoever you send to the campfire, and then also by killing specific monsters. Uh, they have wild like a whole array of awesome uh, abilities that they give you, or one-time uh, potions that you can throw or take, or weapons that you can use from the for the rest of the game, but. I think this adds a la layer of strategy that I I didn't know I needed mm -hmm. in the game. Uh, it makes it even more like d and It's like you're going on uh, to a town in between missions to sure. restock on your, on your stuff. Gotta get them rations. Uh, and you're, you're uh, choosing, do I save my gold now and get something cooler later? Do I use my gold here and uh, hope that, you know, I, think I, prefer I don't art. miss it. Oh man. Yeah, uh, without like over the thing. this, yeah. Yeah, I just think that that's cool. It is cool. Um, Way to derail the conversation, Max. No, you're good. Continue. I, I could go on and on about this game. You've not played this nope. yet. Nope, never played uh, either of your top two. I really would be interested in maybe doing a Final Girl-ish video mm -hmm. where uh, I kind of walk Run you through, me through it, it sure. uh, and let you try it because Final Girl was six, and I, I begged you to play that game. Yeah. This is my favorite game of 2021. I know. By far. And we like, can I think that it, play this at two players too. I mean, we like could. I said, we could, I we we could try that. Yeah. Uh, but this game is one that if I have a spare, because it's not short, if I have a spare evening yeah. to myself and I know like I just want to be alone, I want to recharge a little bit. I'm not an introvert by any means, but there are some days where you just want to be alone. You want to be by yourself. Uh, and I will always pick this game. Yeah. I, it just, it's just one that I know uh, forwards and backwards now. I love mixing up my my crew, kind of like your D and D crew, uh, with my with the bard or with the the uh, warrior or the cleric or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and 
and they all have unique dice and they all have unique abilities. It's just, uh, every, every single time I try this, it doesn't feel stale. It doesn't feel like, uh, I, I'll ever like cool on it. It's it's a unique experience mm -hmm. every single time that I always enjoy. So this is my number one, and I'm excited because I, I have on the way. I, I knew we were going to do this video soon. I have on the way stickers that I bought. Uh, that I'm going to give you, and I'm going to give to Emily's game, uh, the initiative, and also to this, where it's a little mm. table knots game of the year oh. sticker. Uh, and I bought, I, I just did game of the year, so that from now on, every time each of us have a game of the year, put we can sticker we on can it. put a little sticker. There on you it. go. Uh, and love that. that. It, it might be silly to whoever if we end up calling those games. It ain't silly to us. It's not. Silly no, to it's us. free self promotion if we call those games. <laughs> And also, it's your favorite game of the year. What are the likelihood that you call exactly. it? Now, me, that's a different story, but you <laughs> probably gonna My keep management's it. still here. For now, I'm <laughs> joking. It's gonna stay for a long time unless I get the deluxe edition. <laughs> Thank you, Doolin, finally. I'm excited. It's not your fault. It was the, the phone's fault yeah. for running out of storage of space. Fault. I hope it did it again. That would be hilarious. Did you check your storage space? Oh my God. See ya. <laughs> Love you guys, bye. I really what didn't. It did. <laughs> <laughs> what if? It's still going. Okay. okay.